Hello guys, and welcome back to the Zane Investing. We'll allow AMC preferred equity unit apes to be converted into AMC shares. Essentially, they use the preferred stock to produce AIP, and now they're asking if they can pump AIP back into AMC. Thus, the corporation is represented by a single ticker instead of two. As a result of an increase in the number of allowed shares of common stock and a reverse split of our common stock, the number of authorized shares has increased. Also, there will be a reverse split, which, as you will see, will be 10 to 1. So, yep, massive merger. Consider what it truly is in terms of the company's value, since this can get a little complicated because you may be thinking about it in terms of the number of shares you own. Consequently, AMC is currently divided into AMC and APE. They're effectively saying, since they both have the same legal and financial claim to the company, let's just merge them back together which, if you're a bit more gloomy, can be interpreted as meaning that the merger was a failure. In August of 2022, Ape debuted and the legal and financial claim to the corporation that is AMC was split between AMC and AP. Since then, the two companies have never traded at parity, as I previously indicated. This is intriguing because they have the same legal and financial claim to the corporation. Consequently, you would anticipate them to trade at fairly similar prices. They are currently wrong by around 275, which is a significant variance. And we will discuss this in a moment. People are currently interpreting this disparity as an arbitrage opportunity, causing Abe to rise and AMC to fall. I'm not participating in the arbitrage opportunity, but I find it intriguing to debate. And I must say that those who are participating are making a wise move. Obviously, there are risks involved. It could backfire on them, but I can see why they're taking the risk, because they're essentially saying, hey, based on this speculative filing, we believe the vote will pass. Essentially, if the vote passes, AMC and APE should be trading at the same price. Clearly, they are attempting to use the disparity between the two prices to return to August. This was created with 50 million shares of preferred stock. Thus, they convert one preferred stock into 100 apes. Thus, the final amount was 5 billion. Once upon a time, there were only 1 billion people. All of them were allowed because preferred stock in 2013 did not require shareholder approval. Thus, this is roughly where we were. Get rid of it. And what they're actually asking in here, what you're about to learn is when they bring IGA back into AMC. The same control that they have over APE is what they're wanting to have over AMC. Prior to this, they were required to obtain shareholder permission to authorize more shares for dilution. They had to come before shareholders for the approval. This was not necessarily true of the preferred stock that was converted into APE. And as you're about to read, they want AMC to provide them with the authority to do whatever they deem necessary without shareholder consent. What does it amount to? It adds up to the reality that they want to be able to use these authorized shares and dilute without shareholder approval in terms of AMC which they can already do in terms of AP. Thus, they are attempting to combine that power. The company is conducting a special meeting for the following reasons, as detailed in greater detail in the attached proxy statement. The first proposal is to approve an amendment to our third revised and restated certificate of incorporation in order to increase the total number of authorized shares of common stock from 524,000 to 550,000. So they are just seeking for additional authorization. Before you can dilute, you must first authorize the shares. Normal procedure for approving an amendment to our certificate of incorporation to effectuate a reverse stock split at a ratio of one share of common stock for every 10 shares of common stock, which, in conjunction with the share increase proposal, shall permit the full conversion of all outstanding shares of series of preferred stock into shares of common stock. So I'm going to read number three but you are going to discover that all of these, they're all happening concurrently or they are all not. This is how things will be set up at the moment. Either you will receive all three or none. This is how the vote is conducted. It's not like you could have liked one and three or one and two, but not the other. Either they are all going or they are not. So suggestion number three to improve one or more adjournments of the special meeting, if required, to facilitate further solicitation of proxies if there are not sufficient votes for the period of the special meeting to accept and adopt the charter amendment proposals. That is nothing remarkable. This is really more legal jargon that they are seeking. They require quorum. 
they require a majority vote to accomplish any of this. So what they're actually going for is one and two are the big ones. And what they're needing is to combine IGAP into AMC. First, they have to gain authorization for extra shares, and then they are going to merge it. In addition, this will occur simultaneously with a 1 for 10 reverse stock split. Typically, when a stock splits, you wind up with additional shares at a lower price. But your investments remain the same. Again, your financial investment remains the same in the case of a normal stock split. It is akin to holding a $10 bill in the case of a 10 for one normal stock split. You now have 10 $1 bills, which means you have more money or shares, but you still have $10. In this circumstance, it's a reverse stock split. Therefore, it's as if you had 10 $1 bills, and now you have one $10 bill. You have less shares, i.e. fewer bills, but you still have $10. So you shouldn't obsess over your share count. You should view it as a massive sum of money. Here is my whole cash reserve, which may be represented by more or less shares. Clearly, multiply the quantity by the price. But look, if your pile of money is gaining value or losing value, that's the big thing that matters here. There is some ambiguity surrounding stock splits and reverse stock splits. In reality, it is nothing more than a mathematical trick. It is more of an accounting discomfort in the posterior. However, stock splits and reverse stock splits do neither produce or destroy value, according to any reputable website or artificial intelligence system that you may have consulted. There is no value creation or destruction, but it appears psychologically cheaper in the one situation and more expensive in the second. Thus, there are undoubtedly psychological implications. And, in addition, it is important to note that from a market perspective, there may be implications in the options market due to the fact that strange things can occur with premium, so that we may proceed with the specifics. Clearly, if you listen to them, they want you to vote affirmatively on each of these. I wish to clarify something. Everyone should have their own thoughts and opinions, in my opinion. My objective in covering this topic and creating this video is to simply explain it. Hopefully, I will be able to simplify things so that you can comprehend them better. You cannot have a situation where there are only one or two people. Anyway, I hope you are currently feeling a bit more assured about what this all means. Therefore, the initial component is just a better debt payment condition. That is amazing. And for the second, you simply need to be aware of the situation. They are essentially grabbing all of the AAP, which was already at a ratio of 1 to 100. Preference shares, they are going to do that. Fix that up, and then they are doing a 10 for 1 reverse split. If everything is approved, and it appears that voting will occur in mid-March of 2023, I'd love to hear your ideas. Which candidate do you support? Please let me know in the comments section below.